Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely evening once again from here in Delhi and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely fine, happy and of course in fine spirits. And of course, your studies are going on in full swing. So just to give you a bit of help on my side, I have selected actually some accounting standard questions from today. Uh, today actually we have selected questions from AS29, AS26 and AS28. Correct? So... Let's go through these questions quickly. The first one is that uh, after a wedding in 2021, now pay attention, actually 10 people died. So after a wedding in 2021, 10 people died, let us say due to food poisoning or something else, possibly, or and for the reason is also written over here, possibly as a result of food poisoning from the products sold by the enterprise. So... Further, it is given that legal proceedings are started seeking damages from the enterprise because enterprise had supplied the foods. So in wedding, 10 people died on account of food poisoning. So damage is done and case has been filed against the enterprise. But enterprise disputes the liability. Enterprise is disputing the liability that we are not responsible for it. Up to the date of approval of the financial statement for the year ended 31st of March 2022, enterprise lawyers advert, uh, advise that it is probable that enterprise will not be found liable. That means till up to 31st of 3, 2020, the lawyers of the enterprise actually are of the opinion that enterprise ultimately will not be found liable. So indirectly, it means till 31st March 2020, that means if I am going to prepare my financials on 31st of March 2020, because in that particular case, we have a uh, we have a sort of hunch that we may not be found liable. So in that particular case, it means the probability of the outflow of the funds is not there. So no provision is required. No provision is required on 31st of March 2020. This is your first answer. However, question further stresses that however, when the enterprise prepares the financial statement for the year 31st of March 2021, the lawyers advise that owing to the developments in the case, it is probable that now the enterprise could be found liable. So that means on 31st of 3, 2020, probability of outflow of funds is not there. So no need to make the provision. However, now the situation has changed. So by the end of 31st March 2021, by the end of 31st March 2021, now we feel that probability of outflow of funds is there. So we must make a suitable provision. That is the situation in this particular case. Now, this question number two has, we have already discussed this question so many times. And this question has struck in your December 2022 paper and even 21 paper. But I have a hunch again, this, this particular question is going to strike. Although I have explained it so many times, just to make the point clear, actually there is an entity and it is uh, running almost 15 cases, there are 20 lawsuits, sorry. At the end of the financial year ending 31st or 12, 2021, a company finds that there are 20 lawsuits cases. 20 lawsuits cases are there, correct? And information with regard to that is given to you. Uh, in respect of five cases, Chances are there that we would win the case. So no question of making any provision in the next 10 cases in the next 10 cases in in the next 10 cases we have a chance to win 60% so ignore it that mean while solving such question you have to ignore the winning uh, winning cases where you have a chance that you are going to win you simply ignore it now coming back to this particular point in case of Mm -hmm. in case of these cases these are 10 cases so here we feel that we may lose the case and 30 percent chances are there so because 30 percent chances are there 30 percent chances are there and pen is creating problem anyway 30 percent chances are there and if 30% chances are there and if we would lose the case, then then we will have to pay 120000 as the compensation for each case. So how much compensation you are going to pay, as I told you, and I have told you several times now, first you multiply, first you multiply 120000 
करेक्ट वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड पर केस एंड थर्टी परसेंट एंड रिमेंबर वन थिंग हेयर यू आर रनिंग विथ टेन केसेस सो टेन इंटू वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड इंटू थर्टी परसेंट दिस मच अमाउंट यू विल हैव टू कंप्यूट सिमिलरली हेयर टेन परसेंट चांसेस आर देयर डेट यू मे लूज द केस सो यू विल हैव टू कंप्यूट द प्रोविजन फॉर द सेम so how you are going to compute the provision for the same first multiply total number of cases with compensation per case that is equal to 2 lakh and then multiply it with the percentage percentage is 10% so whatever amount you get simply add it then further information is given with respect to five cases here we have to ignore the cases where we feel that we are going to win and then as far as such cases where chances of losing are there so there are two cases here uh, one low damages another one is high damages low damages means where we feel that we have to pay lesser compensation higher damages means where we have to pay higher amount of compensation so because we are now actually computing uh, the compensation with respect to five cases we have to be alert first of all i will multiply five cases with rupees 1 lakh and then i will multiply it with percentage that is equal to 30% and likewise here five cases and compensation is bit higher 2 lakh 10000 but chances are 20% so this should be your amount of provision you will have to add it and then you can get the provision this is quite an important question and now the next question is related to your as28 you know your as28 actually is related to impairment losses correct impairment of the asset in fact here you have been given information that there there is an asset its cost is 56 lakh and useful life is 10 years salvage value is nil however the current carrying amount is 27 lakh 30000 current carrying amount is 27 lakh 30000 and remaining life is 3 years further it has been given to you that recoverable amount is actually 12 lakh and upward revaluation last year you did is 14 lakh last year you did upward uh, some revaluation and on account of which you found that value has gone up so first of all what we need to do under such situation first of all we need to find out the carrying amount of the asset now carrying amount of the asset is given to you but you must understand that current carrying amount is given to you that means this 27 lakh 30000 must be inclusive of the upward revaluation amount because last year you did actually revaluation remember one thing so current carrying value is already given to you in the question 27 lakh 30000 but you have to be alert because in the question it is given that there is upward revaluation done last year Now last year this asset was up valued by fourteen lakh. Up valued by fourteen lakh. So that means this twenty seven lakh thirty thousand is inclusive of revaluation reserve because whenever any upward revaluation takes place, the entry which you generally pass is your relevant asset account debit to revaluation reserve account. So last year you must have passed an entry revaluation reserve account debit to asset account. 14 lakh 14 lakh so that is the reason this carrying amount is inclusive of the revaluation reserve indirectly what i am trying to actually hammer into your mind is that you are already having an existing revaluation reserve balance of 14 lakh now under impairment losses as you know we compare the carrying amount with the recoverable amount correct now recoverable amount is also given to you in the question which is equal to 12 lakh because your recoverable amount is lesser than your carrying amount that when there is impairment loss to the extent of 15 lakh 30000 now the question is because generally whenever any impairment loss takes place generally the entire impairment loss generally the entire impairment loss is transferred to profit and loss account your impairment loss is 15 lakh 30000 however at the same time if you are having some existing balance in the revaluation reserve account then first of all you will adjust the impairment loss against the existing revaluation reserve because you are having a revaluation reserve of 14 lakh so out of 15 lakh 30000 14 lakhs shall be debited to revaluation reserve account this is important and then balance will be transferred to profit and loss account now question is basically asking you what amount of impairment loss you are going to charge 
against the revaluation reserve and against the profit and loss account. So this should be your answer that out of 15 lakh 30 thousand worth of loss, 40 lakh, 40 lakhs shall be charged against the revaluation reserve. And of course, remaining balance 130 will be charged against the profit and loss. Correct. So, and we have selected one question from your AS26 because AS26 is also quite an important standard. It seems actually so far if we will gaze the trend of the what we call these papers, we found that AS26 is being preferred. So this question, similar question we have already attempted. Correct. Remember one thing. Seasons India Limited def had deferred research and development cost of 150 lakhs. So deferred cost of 150 lakhs, that means this cost need to be written off. Sales expected in the subsequent year is given to you. In year 1, you are expecting a sale of 400, in year 2, 300, in year 400. So it is the pattern of sales which you may get out of what we call this development cost. So this development cost is nothing but an intangible asset because it is clearly given that it will result in some sales. Now question is, you are required to suggest how research and development costs should be charged to profit and loss account. This is your first question. Now it is very simple. Generally, the cost of intangible assets are written off as per the cash flows which they will bring to us. For example, in this case, in year 1, I am going to have 400, then in year 2, 300, then 200 and 100. If I will total it up, it will be equal to 1000. So in this proportion, I am going to write it off. For example, in the first year, how much cost I am going to write off? That is 400 divided by just wait. Divided by 1000, divided by 1000, and this is the cost. So that means I am going to write off 60. Similarly, in the next year, because returns is equal to 300 divided by total return 1000, this will become the proportion into 150, 45 lakh worth of cost I am going to write off. Similarly, in the third year, I am going to write off 30, and in the fourth year, I am going to write off 40, 15. Question number one is not difficult to answer, but what question states in the second part if at the end of the third year it is felt that no further benefit will accrue in the fourth year how the unamortized expenditure would would be dealt with in the accounts of the company now question is telling suppose if after third year you feel that you are not going to get anything out of this particular asset for example here it is given that in the fourth year actually we have a sales of 100 now the question is twisting the facts question is telling that if after third year we feel that this particular asset is not going to fetch any returns then how we are going to deal with the unamortized expenditure unamortized expenditure if you have seen actually till up to third year you have written how much 60 plus 45 105 105 plus 30 105 plus 30 is equal to 135 i think right 60 plus 45 plus 30, 135 expenditure we have already written off till up to third year. Now, at the end of at the end of the third year, it is felt that no further benefit in the fourth year will be there than how much I am going to write off. Quite obviously, because the fourth year benefit is 15. Now, if I feel that after the end of the third year, I will not get any return. Then in third year itself, I am going to write the entire what we call remaining cost. That been 135 we have already written. Actually, how much it is? It is equal to 60 plus 45. In fact, sorry, till up to second year, we have written off 45. So by the end of the third year, we are remaining with 45 worth of cost, which need to be written because total cost of the asset is equal to 150. Now question is telling if after third year there will not be any benefit. So if there will not be any benefit, that means at the end of the third year the remaining cost is 45. So entire 45 will have to be written off. This will be your answer. Correct? Then in case number 5, even such sort of question have struck so many times and so many times we did. Even in December 2022, this sort of question was there. Even in December 2021 paper, this sort of question is also there. Welkins Corporation is engaged in research on a new process design for its product. 
it had incurred an expenditure of 530 lakh on research up to 31st 3 2020 now this question is with a slight change actually here you have been given that you have already incurred some expenditure correct on some research work on a new process till up to 31st 3 2020 the development of the process began on 1 4 2020 that means the next year the development of the process started beginning and development phase expenditure is 360 lakhs up to 31st 3 2021 which meets the recognition criteria which meets the recognition criteria so that means on 1 4 2021 i will recognize this particular asset at 360 at 360 correct and question further states that from 1 4 2021 the company will implement the new process design which will result which will result in after tax saving of 80 lakhs per annum for the next five year because because on 1 4 2021 we have recognized this asset at 360 lakhs but question has also stated that this particular asset is going to fetch you some returns which savings is nothing but return uh, 80 lakhs per annum for the next five years the rule is that when we recognize an asset we recognize it either at cost or now i will have to compute the value in use now see here in order to compute the value what i will do savings after tax for the next five years is 80 lakhs is given to you correct savings is 80 lakhs and company's cost of capital is 10 percent so you simply take the annuity factor of 10 percent for five years which is equal to 3.798 and it is given in the question so I can simply multiply it 80 with 3.78. So I can find out the present value of the cash flows. So present value of the cash flows is equal to 303.26 lakhs. That means the on 1-4-2021, I have recognized this asset at a cost of 360 lakh, but its present value is but its present value of cash flow is. as we compute it by multiplying 80 with the with 3.7908 it is equal to 303.26 lakhs so out of these at lower figure this particular asset will be recognized that means i am going to recognize the asset at this particular cost now when i will reach the end of this particular year i will take the difference and i will write that difference to the profit and loss account now, if we will compute the difference, difference will be equal to 56.74 lakh. I have solved it. Don't worry about that. 56.74 lakh will be the difference. This difference will be debited to profit and loss account. Further, because we have recognized this asset at 303.26 and the life of this asset is 5 years, each year I will write it off by rupees 60.65. That means when you will reach the end of third, end of 21, in profit and loss account, you will debit 56.74 and also you will amortize this much amount of expenditure 60.65 and the cost of the asset or carrying amount of the asset at the end of the current year will be equal to 303.26 minus 60.65. So this is how you have to reflect this. Uh, this sort of what we call question if it is asked in the examination now this question has been taken from from it seems uh, interim reporting as 25 correct as 25 also we have covered as 26 as 28 and now this is uh, related to as 28 we have covered one question and then uh, AS26, AS29 also and now we are moving to AS25. As you know AS25 deals with interim reporting. Each one of you know the meaning of interim reporting. Generally accounts are prepared on annual basis. Correct? But if our reporting period is less than what we call normal accounting period of 12 months, generally we call it interim reporting. 
Here it is written that K9 Limited shows net profit of Rs. 5,40,000 for the quarter 3 after incorporating the following. So this company has already prepared the accounts for quarter 3. And in quarter 3 its net profit at present is equal to 5,40,000. 5,40,000. The net profit is this much. Now question states that bad debts of 30,000 incurred during the quarter. That means in quarter 3 you incurred a bad debts of 30,000. Logically the rule is that whatever expenses which you incur in the particular quarter you need to debit the entire amount of expenditure. Logically I should have had subtracted entire 30,000. But question says that 50% of the bad debts have been deferred to the next quarter. That means while computing this net profit, we subtracted only 15,000, 30,000 out of 30,000. Actually, I should have had subtracted 30,000. But question is telling that 50% bad debts have been deferred to the next quarter. Now, which is wrong? That means I will, in order to find out the correct profit of this quarter, I must subtract 15,000 more. 30, out of 30,000, 15 already subtracted. Correct? Now, 15,000 more I will have to subtract. That is the point is. Further, the question states in this case that extraordinary loss of 28,000 incurred during the quarter has been fully recognized in this quarter. That is the correct treatment. You need not require to do anything. Similarly, additional depreciation of 36,000 of third quarter resulting from the change of the method of depreciation is, has also been charged. So, that is also a correct treatment. We might have what we call change the method of depreciation on account of that. We, mu we might have to actually uh, give some additional depreciation which we have charged in this particular quarter. Again, this is the correct treatment. Now, question is simply asking us find out the correct quarterly income. Now, in order to find out correct qu quarterly income, as I told you, out of 5,40,000, you have to subtract 15,000 which you haven't subtracted so far. So, your correct income will be equal to 5,25,000. Is it clear to you? Your correct income will be equal to 5,25,000. Extraordinary losses and depreciation, you need not require to do any treatment because those have been correctly recorded. Then we pick up seventh question and seventh question is again related to interim reporting. K10 Limited expect to receive dividend income of rupees 100 crores on its investment in quarter October-December 2018. Correct. So this company might be preparing or might be what we call preparing quarterly reporting for the quarter October to December. October to December. And company is expecting to receive 100 crores of investment in this particular quarter. But it proposes to recognize only 25 crores of dividend income in the financial statement of each quarter. So instead of including entire 100 crore company simply wants to include only one fourth now as per as 25 whatever revenue which we re re whatever revenue which we re uh, receive or supposed to receive in a particular quarter must be credited to that particular quarter only so logically in this case company instead of what we call taking the uh, 100 crores worth of income uh, to each quarter, it is better to treat the entire 100 crores worth of income as income of this particular quarter. Correct? So that should be your answer. Entire 100 crores should be what we call credited. Again, this question we have taken from AS25. K12 Limited is dealing in, and I expect this question to strike in the examination, in the current examination. K12 Limited is dealing in seasonal product. The quarterly sales pattern of the product is given to you. Now, quarterly sales is given to you. The first quarter ending on 31st of March, you expect 15% of sales and then in second quarter, 15%, then 50% and then 20%. That means you are expecting higher sales in quarter 3, no doubt about that, where you expect that out of your total sales, 50% sales will be in quarter 3 only. For the first quarter ending 31st of 3, 2018, company has given some information for the first quarter. And as per this information, as per this information, what we have here, that sales will be 50 crores. Sales will be 50 crores. 
and salary and other expenses will be 30 crores. Mm -hmm. Two crores expenses will be there on advertisement and on administration actually eight. So all in all we may say total expenditure 30 plus 2 plus 8 is equal to 40 and sales will equal to 50. Now the main question is that while preparing the interim financial report for the first quarter K12 wants to defer 21 crores of expenditure to the third quarter on the ground that it is having more sales. Out of 40 crores worth of expenditure, this company is interested in taking 21 crores to the third quarter simply on the ground that, as I told you earlier, the third quarter will have the highest income that is near about 50%. Now, that is not true as we know, correct? So, all the expenses related to particular quarter must be debited to that particular quarter. So, in, the, in this particular case, the contention of the management is wrong. An entire 40 lakhs or sorry 40 crores worth of expenditure will be debited to quarter one so quarter one's income will be 50 minus 40 that is equal to 10 which i have also given under solution 10 is your income now question number nine is related to your discontinued operation discontinued operation we have seen that some questions have been asked from this particular standard also now z limited z limited is uh, engaged in the business of production of passenger cars and sports cars. During the year 2017 and 18, Z Limited has enforced a gradual change in the product line of an overall plan. The board of directors of Jet Limited has passed a resolution on 10th of November 2017 to this effect that gradually we are going to actually uh, make some changes. At the end of the year 2017 and 18, the production of a sports car has been reduced to 50%. This company was dealing in two types of cars, passenger cars and sports cars. But at the end of the year 2017 and 18, now the production of the sports car has been reduced to 50%. The spare capacity, obviously now you will have the spare capacity and this spare capacity will be utilized for the production of cars, passenger cars, correct? And whose demand has been increasing, you can say so. By the end of the first quarter of 2017-18, the production of sports car has been reduced to nil. The production of passenger cars has increased due to overall plan to use the spare capacity. Now, question is asking simply, should it be treated as get discontinued operation? Under AS24, if we make gradual changes, such gradual changes are never ever treated as discontinued operation. Your answer should be this. So, by gradually reducing the size of the operation in the product line of sports cars, the company has increased the scale of operation of the passenger cars. So, such a change is a gradual or, evasio or evolutionary or phasing out of a product line or class of services and does not meet the what we call definition of criteria in AS24. So, in this case, it is not, it, it will not be considered as discontinued operation. Now, 10th, Y Limited has two divisions, namely furniture and textile. Textile manufacturing. During the year 1920, the textile division has been separated by demerger. So, earlier we were having two products, furniture and te textile. Now, what we have decided that uh, during the year 1920, now textile division has been separated by a demerger. We have studied under business combination in the ascended in three what we mean by demerger. So, by forming a new company, Wi Fi Fashion Limited. So, indirectly, it means now we have sold out textile division to a new company, Wi Fi Limited. Is it a case of discontinuing operation under AS24? Yes, it is a case of discontinuing operation under AS24. Because your textile manufacturing company was a separate component of the enterprise that has been now disposed of. So, if a component is disposed of, then it is treated as what we call discontinued operation. So, it will be treated as discontinued operation. So, these are the questions which I had, had selected uh, out of these standard. So, in the upcoming session, obviously, I will come out with some more what we call questions which I expect are quite important from the examination point of view. So, shall meet you now. Uh, 
Oh, obviously tomorrow at the same time. So till then, it's time to say goodbye and also goodnight.